Howdy boys and girls, and on this episode, we are talking all things SEO with Fernando Angula from SEM Rush. This was an episode I put together by popular demand. A lot of people want to learn about SEO. It is an incredibly complex subject, but uh, I am so happy that Fernando joined us because he breaks things down very simply and also stick around at the end of the episode uh, thanks to Fernando and his team at SEM Rush. They are giving us, and I guess you, the listener, a exclusive offer uh, for the SEM Rush platform. But on this episode, we are talking about the difference between SEO and SEM. We're talking about the three things that business owners and entrepreneurs can do to improve their SEO. We're also talking about technical things like SERP and featured snippets and zero click results. And if you don't know what any of that means, that's okay. That's why we're talking about it. Also, we're going to talk about uh, Fernando's predictions about artificial intelligence, data, and the future of search. So sit back, relax, and let's get pedaling. You're listening to Tripod, the tricycle creative podcast, produced for anyone interested in being a better digital and content marketer. Host Ross Erosion is a marketing coach, content creator, and entrepreneur who brings you helpful tips, social media updates, inspiring interviews, and his own unique perspective on how to tell your story and grow your business. So sit back, relax, and let's get pedaling. This is Tripod, the Tricycle Creative Podcast, and today I am joined by Fernando. Fernando, hello. Hi, Ross. How's nice it going? to be here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There is a no better time I feel like than now that we are all you know self quarantining and whatnot to to use this opportunity to connect with um, each other. And I'm so happy to have you on the show today um, because we're going to talk a lot maybe exclusively about SEO and yep. SEM today. And it is a topic I get asked about all the time. So I'm so happy to have you here. And why would I have Fernando here? Well, he's going to help answer that question. Fernando, why don't you tell, tell us in, you know, three sentences ish, who are you and what you do? Great, perfect. Three sentences. Okay, let's just start with I the first hold it one. Yeah, exactly, Fernando. Don't worry. I'm not <laughs> counting words or anything. No, no, no problem. I will do it uh, like this. My name is Fernando Angula. I'm head of communications at uh, SEMrush or SEMrush. I do prefer you can pronounce it. And I've been working for the company the last eight years. It's going to be nine already. Uh, basically, I was um, since the beginning of uh, the company's marketing efforts, working as um, basically everything. I was doing sales, then customer success, then uh, marketing. Then I was uh, working with my own teams. And the last three uh, years, I've been doing a lot of conferences because we established several processes uh, for multiple teams uh, with remote workers, with uh, connecting different offices. So. I, uh, I was into the creation of the first blog that, that, that we opened uh, six years ago. Uh, right now, we have more than six blogs in different uh, languages. We're publishing about, I will say, 54 pieces of content uh, per week in different languages. So we had a lot of experience doing the things that, 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 that we do. We create different, um, we develop different tools for uh, different processes. The most important one, of course, is uh, SEO. Uh, then is SEM, uh, social media, content marketing, and the latest updates that we um, th that we have are uh, related to competitive intelligence with market research. So basically, we are all into online visibility. If you have a blog, if you have a website, if you have something online, we can help you to make it better. It's interesting you say that because I've been I've been a fan of the product for a while and I've bounced in in and out of 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 the platform and I have definitely seen in you know the past several years you know definitely a iterative a a like building of new tools and and things into the platform um, that all kind of then work together so let's take a step back for a second for those of 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 you out there who are listening and are like 
okay, I know SEO maybe, but what's SEM? Do you want to explain the difference between SEO and SEM, Fernando? Sure. If we are uh, talking about SEO, we are talking basically about all the activities that you're doing uh, on page, off page, on site, uh, to make your website more visible on the search engine. So you can create content, uh, you can do, uh, for example, uh, surf, uh, surf optimization, surf features optimization, you can do your markups, you can create more buzz uh, around, around it organically without any budget. So you're not paying for getting in there. But if we are paying, if we are talking about SEM, so search engine marketing, uh, there you have different other possibilities. You, but you are using a budget, so you have uh, some um, money allocated to create ads to give you more uh, visibility quickly. And that's you know, it's it's I have when when I work with my clients, oftentimes of uh, again a core product being these things called the roadmap sessions. But a big part of that exercise, we talk a little bit about what are these words you want to be associated with, what words fit your service, that kind of thing. And I like to approach SEM as as kind of a a core or starting point for a lot of marketing efforts because whether you're doing it organically or doing it as a SEM, as a paid component, understanding the keywords and key phrases that you want to be associated with, that's a critical exercise for both organic and paid. It, I mean, is, is, do you agree? Oh, yes, that's definitely correct. Um, because when, uh, for example, you are searching for, um, where you're trying to answer to this question, who are your competitors, right? So basically you have uh, two types of competitors, the ones who are doing SEO. So they're gonna be ranking from one to 10 in the first page of the results. And the ones who are paying for getting higher than their organic results with ads. But the, the question here is the more accurate competitors that you have are the ones who are investing some money on the most appropriate keywords. So I will say you need to have the knowledge about uh, uh, of, of both uh, processes here to find out who are your competitors are. So why, why is SEO something that businesses should look at, invest in? And again, SEO, we talked about, oh, that it's, you're not spending money, but, but it's not on ad spend, right? You're spending money on yeah. resources to ideally your marketing people, your, your web people on SEO. Why is SEO, why is it important? Why should someone pay attention and why should someone, a business entrepreneur want to have this as part of their company? Yes. The, the first uh, and most important thing here, I will say that SEO uh, it, it lasts. So you have your results, um, you are there, you are ranking for your keywords, are you going to be there for a long, long time? And also it will take, um, will take some time to, uh, to rank for those keywords, but your results are going to be there. And the difference with the uh, same strategy, uh, paying for ads, uh, your visibility is going to be uh, just... Um, at the moment when you are paying, if you are uh, just canceling the payment, if you are just uh, not investing anymore in ads, your visibility is going to be off as well as your payment. So definitely SEO uh, results last. And I, I have a lot of conversation these days, you know, when uh, people from uh, companies that were investing a lot of money in, on, on, on ads, they were saying, oh my God, we should invest it because everybody's at home these days, right? Mm -hmm. We should invest it in, in, in SEO the, uh, six months ago or, 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 or a year ago because yeah. those results were right now ranking a lot. They are basically SEO results. A lot of companies, and I will say big brands, are just um, saving that money from ads uh, to the uh, Q3 or Q4 for this year, because right now uh, it doesn't make much sense to do a lot of same if you are, I don't oh, know, a huh. company that is affected, like for example, uh, flight companies, hotel companies, uh, yeah. those who are really affected. It doesn't make sense for them to burn money doing ads because nobody's going to be acquiring their services. So they're in big troubles, but they're saving that money for uh, the, the next quarter. 
I love that strategy right now, given the, you know, the, the new normal we're in as we record this with coronavirus and affecting so many industries, the approach of even taking some of that, what could be SEM. So again, the search engine marketing spend and maybe investing it. Cause that's, I really look at SEO as a investment because to your point, yep. it lasts. But I think what people need to understand, like S SEO is kind of like a, like a long-term investment, right? And it, and and you're not going to see results necessarily, or you shouldn't have the expectation to see them overnight. It can happen, certainly, right? It can certainly, we have a client we're doing some SEO work with right now. We've seen tremendous results, but that's been over three months, right? So <clears throat> SEO is something that, yes, you can start to move the needle a little bit, but it's a long-term investment game. And the gains you're going to get are going to last. SEM, by contrast, is kind of like, you know, kickstarting it. But but to your point, it's only, the, you know, it's only going to go as far as the money you put into it. Once you stop putting money into it, the bottom kind of falls out of it. And I think this is also where starting with SEO, maybe even sometimes before social, is a really smart investment because social is kind of like that too. Social when you stop publishing and posting, you see your gains impacted. SEO, again, you can continue to have gains and wins from the work that you did three months ago, a month ago, a year ago. Um, so it's truly something that every business should be looking at and considering um, You know, when they're looking at their overall kind of digital marketing strategy. So so Fernando, let's say I am, I'm a business owner, but I work with several other business owners and they're sitting there yep. and they're saying, SEO sounds awesome. They've just heard what we just said and they are like, okay, I am somewhat sold. I'm intrigued, right? Well, absent of hiring, uh, there's a couple, you know, there's a lot of options you have, right? Like with digital marketing, they could certainly start using SEM rush. Cause again, that's a search engine SEO tool. And, and for those of you that might be interested in that, we're going to talk a little bit more about that later in this episode. And, uh, Fernando has been incredibly generous. So we have, um, kind of a discount promo code type thing for you. So stay tuned for that, but they could also hire an agency, but, but let's say they want to just dip their toe in. What are some things that a business owner, a entrepreneur can do to start to, you know, impact positively their SEO? Yes, the first thing, the first. Um, most of the business owners, most of entrepreneurs that already, that already have some um, businesses, they have some users or clients, and for them, it will be really useful to start uh, answering um, users' questions answering clients' questions, uh, creating content with those answers. So that's just, that, I will say, is the most um, uh, efficient way to start uh, today. If you ask me this, the same questions, I would say, five years ago, I will definitely suggest doing some uh, other stuff, like, uh, okay, create some posts, then go with, uh, with links, and let's wait to, to, for you to rank, because that was easy at that, uh, at that time. But today, your content needs to answer people's questions. So for, um, for the results that we're seeing today and for the research that uh, companies like, uh, for example, Jumpshot, and Spark Toro and, and Semraj, we are um, analyzing the SERP results. We found out that most of the people are not clicking on any result. I would say uh, today it's about 50% of the people that are not clicking on any result in the first page of Google. Um, that's why, because uh, that's why, for example, Google is creating their own uh, results, which are called surf, uh, surf features. Uh, there are basically videos, images, uh, side links, um, locations, and there are another type which are called feature snippets, uh, which are an amazing uh, box with a list or a ta uh, or a table or a paragraph. And below uh, every single uh, search feature, uh, we have another type of resource that are called people also ask. And you were saying that if you want to create your SEO strategy, you need to wait at least three months, right? But we also find out that if you are creating um, content that is 
um, already format with the right format for getting feature snippets, you can have immediately, and I'm saying this yeah. uh, really seriously, you can have immediately the people also ask result because um, for some reason, Google is given right now um, an opportunity to, to everyone to rank for a question keyword and the answer for that question keyword mm -hmm. into a people also ask result. And I was doing an experiment at the beginning of, of, of this year uh, with an university in, 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 uh, in Australia with, with the guys from there, and we created the format. So the, the format is basically uh, this one. You need to, cre you need to have the, the right question or a list of questions about your products or services. Let's say how to open a bank account, how to transfer uh, my stocks to another bank, for example, mm. something like that, sure. right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is um, high volume. So a lot of people are search searching for that. Um, you can have a beautiful result there with a feature snippet from a bank, let's say, hmm. or for a financial in institution. But if you are trying to answer how to do stock marketing, for example, for uh, millennials, right? Or for young people, or where to acquire uh, insurance for young, for, uh, for young drivers, mm -hmm. something really niche. If you're answering to that uh, in three hours, Google was indexing that question. Wow. And we, re we receive the people also as result, which is below the feature snippet. So that, that was insane. That's crazy. Only, it is, right? And it's, and, and it's really good. So you don't need to rank in the first page of Google to do that. In the second, you don't need to rank even on the um, 10 page of Google. So that's 100 results already. You just need to have the right um, format with the content. So Fernando, I think you probably will have a couple other things, but but I want to stop you and talk a little bit about the, the, just your first juicy recommendation when it comes to what businesses can be doing, and that is creating content around questions around their business, right? And yep. and are these when you talk about Google? So we, we may throw around this thing called SERP. Okay, and what SERP stands for is Search Engine Results Page, and that's when you do a search, it's what comes up right on Google. It's what comes up. Yep. The featured snippet and people also ask, and some of these things are those in the category of, I think what they're calling like the zero click results that people are actually getting their answers without actually having to click. And that's, and, and, and can you talk a little bit about, about that, about the, the zero click type of, of results and the impact that might be having with, with some of your clients or, or what you're seeing with that in your experience? Yes. Um, basically, yes, that you're, you're mentioning right now, the, the zero click result is uh, what we found out on, this, on the SERP, on the uh, first page of Google, or the page of the results when you are uh, creating a search query. Uh, so you have all the information in the first page uh, with that feature snippet, for example, for example, how to boil an egg, right? You have mm -hmm. a step one, a step two, a step three, an image, and you, will, you are not going to be clicking on that result because you have already all that information there. So uh, right now, uh, the, um, the, um, the number of feature snippets for any single question in any industry is about 85%. So for wow. every single question everywhere, there's going to be a feature snippet. Hmm. But this is the, the number for people also ask results is even higher. It's like 99% uh, 99 already. So right now in the health industry, for example, the number of questions about uh, what is uh, coronavirus, how to, um, whatever the question is in, in, in the health industry uh, is growing like really crazy. So for every single question, there's going to be an answer as a result. If you, are, uh, if you want to rank, for example, how to uh, apply for a bank mortgage, for example, you need to have your, the name of your brand um, you need to have the location of oh, your, uh, your that's offices. smart. Yes, yeah, so you need to have you need to own your own result with your own data. So you need to be thoughtful business, about the featured snippet and what's being included, and even inside of that, if it's a zero yes. click result. Interesting. Yes. Okay, that's an investment on um, on the future. And I will um, my my second tip will will uh, uh, here will be to have uh, this uh, question keywords with your, the name of your brand. Um, first one is what is, in this case, uh, mm -hmm. I will say the name of your brand or your own name or who is, where is, and how to, 
whatever the question is. So those three question keywords are the main ones. What is, for example, what is SEMrush, right? You will have mm. there a beautiful feature snippet and a people also ask them a, a, a corporate page from Wikipedia and you have a lot of videos there. So you need to own your own, uh, your own brand names or um, the questions that are related to your business, all of them. The third and last one will be to try, um, and this is an experiment, of course, to try to do that by uh, voice search. So you think and you believe, and I'm sure you have a lot of data because of where you are and what you do. So optimizing or, or in thinking on voice search, that's yeah. kind of a second piece to, to think about that from your overall strategy. So how is that different than planning for what I'll call traditional search? How are those things different? Yes. Um, when we're talking about a traditional search or going for your main keywords, creating your semantic core, things that are related to, to your business, uh, but that depends on the goal of, uh, that you have. If your goal is traffic, which is good, most of the companies, they are uh, online because of the traffic that they're receiving, um, that's something good. But um, Google is also losing tons, tons of traffic. Actually, a couple of days ago, I was in a, in a presentation um, with our next Googler, and he was uh, saying that uh, Google is losing about 200 million people per year in, ter in, in traffic terms, which is a lot. And um, where, where those people are going? So basically, there is uh, not only um, one search engine, right? There are uh, several parallel search engines, which are, for example, um, Amazon is a search engine as well for products, right? Uh, we have, uh, for example, Expedia. We have Quora. It's a search engine for answering questions. So they have a lot, a lot of uh, competitors. So for being there in a search feature, well, the main idea for Google to create a search feature is to retain the user. So you, mm. uh, they will not need to go to another resources. So you have uh, Google Flights. Uh, you have, uh, actually, I believe you can, uh, in some countries, there, there is uh, Google del Delivery as, as well, delivery function, where you can pick from wherever the delivery company it is. You have uh, maps, of course. You have videos. You have several, several other, other, other features that are making people stay in Google. So it's part of their strategy. It's part of their products. And it's something that is working uh, really well for them. So we just need to use it. And you know something? Most of the people, they are not aware that they have by default, already some feature snippets. I was asking mm. uh, to, to some to some guys in in, in India uh, last year how many feature snippets you have. Well, they were business owners, of course, with their their website. How many fe feature snippets uh, you have? And they they were telling me uh, we we don't have uh, feature snippets. We are not working with that. You're the, the the first one talking about that. I say okay, let me check that on Sembras because we have this feature that is called organic uh, research. You just need to um, copy their your domain, and we copied uh, their, their domain, and we found out that they had around five thousand feature snippets. And it was, oh my god, what? How does that possible? Because, <laughs> yes, because Google is pushing by default. If you have the question keyword, right, is there? You you have a piece of text that is kind of uh, the, using the same amount of words that they are using for the features. The, for the feature snippets, so they are using that information from your website by default. But if someone from uh, their com their competitors are going to be uh, checking that, you can just immediately have yeah. the uh, the right amount of words, the right size for the images, the right keyword, and it's just with uh, within days. In a couple of days, you're going to be beating that result. And I think that's a big thing to remember. And what I tell my clients who, who are interested in SEO is that SEO is absolutely an ongoing thing for that very reason. You may incidentally be falling into, you know, search results, right? You may not even know. Um, or maybe it even is a strategy and you are, but if someone else is actively trying to get that traffic, tr you know, get views or get sourced be for a search, they're doing the same thing. They're working against, you know, I say against you, but they're, wor they're working for those eyeballs. They're working to get on that front page. They're working to get on those featured snippets. They're working to get, 
their video uh, pulled in, you know, they're, they're doing these things also. So it's an ongoing uh, operation, right? To, I would say, not only just maintain, but obviously to grow too. And as the search engines themselves evolve and change a little bit, you know, I know that uh, every couple years, Google will kind of make a, a small, uh, I, I, mean, I guess I'm using small in air quotes here. I'm using small algorithmic change <laughs> or something, and it can completely upend entire industries, uh, you know? So oh, yeah. um, it, I know in this past well, year every couple two, of years, yeah. uh, well, it's gonna, every two weeks, I will say, <laughs> it's, it's really awful. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so one tool, you're talking a lot about some of, you know, these, these, these extra like Google delivery and Google takeout or things like those different things. One tool that I really encourage businesses to be utilizing if they're not is Google My Business. Can you talk a little bit about that kind of Google service? And is there anything that that you've seen in the past year, month, or what have you? Or, you know, what insights do you have as it relates to the Google My Business if you are a business owner? Sure. Uh, first of all, Google My Business is, uh, is free, which is it's already, it's already amazing. You can just uh, um, register there, register your business, having uh, your uh, address there, the, the telephone, uh, their working hours. If you have an offline business as well, if it's online, uh, no problem with that as well. But if you have, uh, if your business are inside of Google My Business, you're going to be located first. The, the major thing is, of course, in, in Google Maps, uh, uh, you're going to be found in different uh, Google other products, their directories. So you will have plenty, plenty of um, changes that people will find out who you are. So just being there is already good for also Google making um, notice uh, that you exist in the uh, in, in the web. Yeah, it's kind of like you add, you get added to the Google like Rolodex going like way back to the analog days, but you kind of get like, like Google's like, oh, we acknowledge that you exist. You know, it's like they, you're yeah. on the, you're on the map, if you will, literally and figuratively. It is, and it is, and uh, we said in the, at the beginning, it's a it's a free uh, it's a free product. You can use it uh, really well uh, if you are I don't know a restaurant, uh, a bank. If you are uh, whatever the the product that that you are doing, you need to have that location. You need to have uh, that phone number. You did need to have that um, address there for, for you, and that's going to be working really really good for you. And from there, of course, you can also have different um, different uh, services and features which gonna which are gonna make your business more more visible and I think people need to understand like to register on Google my business you need to verify with a physical address um, that's how they verify that you're you are who you say you are but for many entrepreneurs who maybe you know work out of their home and they don't want that address public, you do have the ability once the account gets verified to just set up a service area. So if you run an online business, you know yes, you'll need to verify with a specific address to start, but you can then uh, kind of extend uh, and keep me honest here, Fernando, like extend it to a service area so you don't have like your home address out there on on Google. Uh, you know my my. Correct on that? Yes, yes. Yeah, that's true. Because so. you don't have the, the, the need to have a, a, a local a local position geographically, so you will be extended on, on, on that. And of course, some of the uh, really good things here are, of course, the the, um, the feedback session or, or the comments uh, yeah. that people can leave. And that's something that is really good for local SEO. If you have uh, good reviews, yes, the reviews. If you have good reviews, uh, people are going to be just finding you better. So you can also rank for that on this search feature that is called uh, the local um, SEO pack, which are basically, if you are saying, I'm hungry, there's going to be a list of restaurants that are near you. So for being listed on, on those results, you need to be on Google My Business. Yeah, and that's the thing people, I think, don't understand. They may say, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on Yelp. And I can appreciate the headache of this answer, but the reality is, is Google's creating these separate products because, to your earlier point, it wants to have its hands 
in all these different industries. So Google prioritizes, right? It's their playground when you go to google.com. They prioritize what types of things you see and they're gonna give priority to Google platform and, and products. So, okay, great, if you're on Yelp, but I would probably, and I think accurately argue, that the reason that Google has really been boosting the last, I would say two to three years, Google My Business is, they didn't want the traffic going to Yelp, right? They want to keep the traffic essentially in their own little ecosphere. So it's all well and good. And it is still very valuable to have things if you're a restaurant like on Yelp, but you do need to diversify. And I think you definitely need to consider if you're not already on Google My Business um, doing that. Because again, Google's going to prioritize its own platform services types of thing. Yes, and here I, I will need to uh, make a point because uh, for uh, marketers these days, and um, I don't know how all this situation is going to end. I believe nobody knows, but uh, basically, I believe there's going to be uh, three types of marketers after this uh, uh, coronavirus situation. Uh, the first type of marketers, which are mostly the majority of marketers, are going to be still working on users' needs on users' preferences, on users' questions. So that's why I was telling uh, you need to create content based on users' questions because um, we are in the user uh, era. So whatever the user wants, we need to provide them, right? They want to, uh, I, I don't know, uh, to call for a, uh, for, for a delivery at 2 a.m. Uh, while you're in Sydney, for example, you want Chinese, you can do it because you are the user and there's a company that created a service to provide you with whatever you want. We are living in that in yeah. that moment. These days, we can order whatever we want at the moment we want, wherever we are. Right. <clears throat> the second type of use uh, of marketers, and I believe these are going to be uh, the um, the ones who are related to uh, corporations, to, to to big brands, are going to be those who are working uh, basically with user data. So. Mm. Um, just, just for an instance, most of the companies right now, they are showing their data capabilities, their, their big data analysis saying, uh, okay, this industry is going up, this industry is going down. We're mm. going to do our maze analysis on this industry. So they are not going directly to the user, but they are, go they are going directly to uh, um, complete uh, countries, complete regions, doing marketing in big terms, marketing with big data, right? And this is going to be working a lot with the artificial intelligence and with the voice search results. Actually, we made the voice search result last year here in, in, in SEMrush, and we found out a lot of stuff, which was amazing. For example, uh, we had this uh, research based on 20,000 search queries uh, to understand, okay, how you can get a voice search result, because in your uh, Google Analytics, in your search console, you don't have any data about voice search results, right? Uh, from the, 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 the point of view of keywords, which one of them are giving you what, right? Hmm. Uh, so we created this research and we found out that first thing first, um, the voice assistants, so the the home, um, the Google Home, Home Mini or any Android device, they're really, uh, really good understanding human, uh, human voices, but they are really bad understanding another robot voice. So uh, they, <laughs> yes. they can't, that's funny. They can't talk to each other, but they can talk to humans. Okay. That's yes, good to know. Yes. All right. So that, that, that's, that's really good. And sometimes they are not accurate, right? Yeah. Um, but they're really, really bad when they're, they're understanding um, another robots and, and another um computers. So uh, that's why we needed to do this, uh, this 20,000 search queries uh, manually uh, about three months, just repeating question by question in different, different devices. And we found out that, okay, um, with most of the uh, search intent related qu uh, uh, queries, for example, with the transactional or with the informational ones, uh, you have a voice result uh, that was taken from a feature snippet or a people also ask result. So 80% of the results um, are taken uh, from those two search features, from the feature huh. snippet and huh. from the people also ask result. And that was really impressive because, okay, you are investing your time answering people questions and you will have a feature snippet 
Also, as a bonus, you can have a voice search result, which is com a complimentary, um, I don't know, win for anybody yeah. that is working with this kind of, uh, of results these days. And mm -hmm. that, of course, is not going to be um, increasing the amount of traffic for your website, but it's going to be increasing the amount of awareness first and the brand image. So if you have a business and you want to uh, make it more um, scalable, you need to do brand consolidation, which more of the um, small banks or medium banks or medium, medium um, uh, telecommunication company are um, doing th these days. So mm. basically, these type of results are really great. Um, most of the marketers who are working for corporate uh, businesses, they are going to be working a lot with data scientists, with analyzing uh, big data. And the last part of marketers, the ones who are starting, so uh, what are going to do, what we're going to do if we're start, if you, as a business owner, are um, deciding, you're deciding to uh, create a website or to create a marketing process. So the things that you need to do is copying the thing that marketers from small or medium companies, at least still thousand uh, people, mm -hmm. they are doing. So following what the user wants. Hmm. That's Interesting. basically it. Yeah. Hey, so I have a question for you related to data, right? Obviously, a ton of SEO and SEM is, is all around data. And I would even say by extension, digital marketing is nowadays. I'd like to hear from you. I recently did an episode. Uh, I want to say it was two or three back. And we, uh, we talked about Google's announcement to get rid of the cookie by 2022. Um, and I'm curious to hear from you if you've heard any rumblings about that in, in your circles or what predictions maybe you have around I would say cookie usage. So for those of you out there that haven't checked out that episode, cookies are, are little pieces of, of web code that that enable um, a lot of the more sophisticated digital marketing processes. So when you go to Nike and you're looking at a pair of Air Jordans and then you go to Facebook and they pop up in your news, in your feed, oh, that's essentially done with a cookie. And Google has said that they are working to eliminate that 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 tool, if you will. Have you heard anything about that? Do you believe them? Do you, you know, what what's the chatter in your circles around that? Well, actually, that was a big uh, discussion also on, also on Twitter um, because the predictions that uh, Google can make from here to 2022, for example, in, in two years or uh, next year, so many things can change, but it seems like something that it's possible um, I don't know if can, it's possible for US, but um, since I'm in, in Europe, um, the the society, the, the way the people are uh, checking for our personal data, how companies yeah. are uh, it's stricter, it, right? It's more complicated there. It is, US, right? It is. When, when you're talking about um, your personal data, everybody's like, "No, that's uh, if you change, if you touch something, that's um, just uh, against my." Uh, 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 civilian rights, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, here I see it like more difficult, but I was really impressed a couple of days ago when Google launched this um, movement, um, this research based on where people are moving in this quarantine from every single country. So they basically took all the data from all our mobile devices. I saw that. Oh, that that's, was impressive. So that was yeah. crazy, right? So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if they can do something like, for example, here was a lot of discussion. Okay, so where are my personal uh, data rights? Uh, uh, Google just launched this. So they can do something like that. And it was really, I would say, beautiful in in terms of, of, of that analysis. Uh, but of course, they know where we are exactly every single moment. They know if we are going to the park, if we are going uh, to our jobs, if we are going to the uh, which store. So they are not basically yeah. everything. And they show us uh, from every single country. So they have 20, 220 countries there. So for every single country in the world, they have data about all the people who are using. Yeah, and it, it doesn't matter if you have an Android or an iPhone device or a Windows device. You will have a locator there, a, a, a geolocator, a G GPS. And for some reason, yeah, they're you will unique. Have some there, there are 
there are like unique mobile identifiers, you know, and yeah. whether you, it doesn't matter. And also if a lot of, if you're anything like me, um, I have an Apple device, but yep. <laughs> it is basically a conduit to the entire Google suite. Like, you know, it's, yeah. I do feel like, I think that this Android, like I remember, you know, and I'm sure you do too, uh, you know, back when Android and Apple were just at each other's throats and you were one tribe or the other, that is not really the case anymore. Um, yep. you know, so I don't feel as via, like it was almost to the point where it's like a social, you know, you're like a social pariah. If you had one, uh, you know, if you had an Android and everyone you hung out with had a, had an iPhone, but, but my iPhone, like I actually don't enjoy a lot of the Apple. I hate Apple Maps between you and me. So like I use Google Maps. Yeah. I have G Suite. I use Gmail. I use like Google stuff. And I think that's why the almost like the feud became a little less because Google's like, listen, you can sell as many iPhones as you want because at the end of the day, we're going to also going to focus on our products and people who are on iPhones are using all these, you know, Google products. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, I think I'd like to hear your opinion on this and your thoughts. I, I predicted, and actually it was either me, I, I'm the, the brilliant prediction. I don't know if it was by me or my co-host, but the prediction was Google is saying they're getting rid of cookies, right? Yep. But we threw out there the idea that are they just going to replace it with something else? that is proprietary to Google. And I don't know if that's a crazy idea. It seems like it could be plausible. They have a considerable market share with Chrome, like that they could roll out this tool that essentially, you know, doesn't allow Facebook to use cookies and doesn't allow these other, but if you use Google, then you could use that technology. What are your thoughts on that? Do you think that's something that could happen? Oh yes, definitely. <laughs> so uh, I they thought can so. Do it. Yeah. Of course. Yes. Yes. Actually, when um, uh, uh, I believe you have heard about uh, Avinash uh, Kaushik, uh, the the father of Google Analytics, so he's in charge of right now of the um, of the uh, artificial intelligence team on Google. So he was. I was in a in a private presentation of, of his in in Finland, in Helsinki, and he was showing a device, uh, well, actually it was a Pixel, I believe it was a Pixel okay. 3 or Pixel, Pixel okay. 4, but it was a prototype. So he was um, saying that um, our goal in Google is to have uh, the best result, um, the best predictive result that people want. So we don't want to give you the best result, we want to predict what you want, even Ooh. after that you are doing that search query. So he was doing this and it was just amazing, mind blowing. So he was asking, hey Google, I want to order a pizza. And the, um, the assistant was saying, hey Abinash, but I believe today you want hamburger, right? And I was thinking, oh my God, yes, I want a hamburger. So let's order a hamburger. So he was, uh, the assistant was uh, predicting what he wanted because he, uh, uh, the assistant analyzed all the other times that he was uh, um, eating a pizza, where was the, the, the most appropriate timing for ordering a burger, the time that... He, so all the information that only our artificial intelligence can detect, she, uh, he, uh, the assistant was doing in just a second. And that's just saying, a, and okay. that's, that's a, that is a... I don't know if it's so far as a fundamental, but, but that's a shift, right? Because I tell people what they don't realize when it comes to SEO and SEM is that... Here's what Google's in the business of. Google is in the business of getting you the most relevant, quality, best results for what you're looking for. And the reason I say that is because they want you to keep using Google. If I searched for currently, if I searched for I want ice cream, right, but all I got was hot dogs, I might say Google doesn't know what the heck it's doing. I'm going to go somewhere else. And that feels like, and keep me honest here, but that feels like where their business has been is, is serving up these best possible results. But what you're saying is actually the shift into possibly not only just the best possible results, but now having all of this data and understanding user behavior of saying, taking that next step of what, well, what would they do next? That's insane. 
That's crazy. Yeah, so, and actually, last year, um, uh, I don't remember Page, Lars Page, the the, the CEO, the, the CEO uh, Google uh, CEO CEO, was selling to everyone that, okay, we were an uh, search engine, um, then we were an answer engine. Yeah. That's where uh, we are right, right now, but we want to be a, um, a service which makes makes you makes you accomplish uh, things. So so we want to uh, wow. create a service to get things done, and that's only by suggestions, right? Uh, so the artificial intelligence in the future, near future, are going to be suggesting, "Hey, you need more milk. Uh, you want me to to buy more more milk for you. You want me to pay your bills. You want me to uh, t- uh, check." Uh, t- t- Take a look on your kids. You want me to do this? So it's going to be just uh, getting things done faster. Did you finish this task on Google Sheets? Did you finish this task hmm. here? Do you want me to help you? Do you want me to match this? So all suggestions everywhere. I believe that's something that is going to become the, the next couple of years or even, uh, even less. So, you know, all of these changes, you guys at SEM Rush have your finger on the pulse. So I want to take some time here as we kind of wrap up. This has been so awesome. Like, I just feel like you are such a wealth of information with this. And I, I, I just, I could sit here and talk SEO for a very, 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 very long time. So I actually kind of feel like I'm going to have you as a recurring person on this show because SEO does change so much. But I want you to talk a little bit about SEM Rush, right? Talk, you know, for those of you out there who who are not familiar with it, um, I I would love for you, in your own words, to tell them what what is the tool, what does it do, and how can it help uh, someone who's looking to get started or you know do some work with SEO and SEM. Perfect. Yes. In my own words, I will um, uh, say that. Uh, we developed a lot of features, a lot of tools. We started being an SEO tool. So basically, you can uh, you could come to our service and just uh, type your keyword, the business, uh, the the keyword that is representing your business, your product or service, and we will give you a lot of ideas related to that keyword. So you will have an understanding on on what other keywords you can use to create. Uh, content to announce your products to announce your um, your next services. Uh, so we were giving you a lot of ideas. These days, the last three years, I will say, we shift a lot uh, into content marketing creation. So we are positioning ourselves uh, the last three years, um, Sam Rush as a content marketing platform. So we can uh, provide you with tools to write content, to check uh, the SEO strategy inside of the content that you are creating, to give you uh, suggestions, hints based, of course, uh, on, on data, and to provide you with the latest trends. Because I know this uh, this is something that mo- most of the businesses uh, were facing, uh, that I have an incredible idea to write about, uh, let's say, cryptocurrencies. Let's open up a, a blog, a niche blog on cryptocurrencies. Okay, you can do that, but there, there are another 100 people, 100,000 people that are, are doing the same thing. Sure. So you need to create relevant or uh, original and uh, really good content on that. And you also need to add uh, some uh, links there and you need to publish there. So for doing all of that, we're going to give you basically all those metrics are the ones that you need to use. So keyword difficulty, um, readability or original ability how good is the content that, that you are creating so uh, for analysis yeah it's kind of like a like a grader and a, like a you know measuring the results uh, semrush is uh, the platform to have all your processes um, in one single place content creation uh, content promotion through social media we have these uh, social media tools uh, for um, external communication Actually, these days, uh, the last week, we launched all our uh, social media tools. So we have um, mm. the uh, social media poster. You can post on any, and you can schedule posts on any social media. You can track the results. All those tools are uh, for free uh, because we understand that this is a, a difficult situa- situation for everyone. So this is a free tool for every for everyone. And we have another tool that is a lead generation tool. So if you want to have 
clients uh, because of Google My Business, of course, um, and you know that they are expanding. Uh, you don't no idea how much they're spending on on ads for example but you know that uh, they're out there we can uh, give you the information about who is expanding in your area so you can pitch them your services mm. as an agency so you can have more more leads if you are an, an, an agency for example so we have so many so many tools but if you if you want to start with SEMrush you will need to start with the understanding about what is SEO and content creation yeah. And so I'm very, very, first of all, I want to say thank you to you and your team. So for the listeners of Tripod, um, SEMrush has, has very, very generously provided us with a promo code that will be in the show notes. So if you go to tripodpodcast.com, again, tripodpodcast.com is where we put all of our show notes. There's going to be a link there and you will get uh, guru level access um, for your account for, I want to say it's like two weeks. We'll have the details on the actual show notes piece, but, but they have a number of different suites of tools, like many, uh, 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 programs and services out there. And guru provides you with a ton of stuff. I mean, I, I was joking with you, Fernando, when we jumped on the call, I said, SEM rush is the perfect tool to have during quarantine because you can just I mean, it, it, you, it's just like kind of rabbit hole after rabbit hole. And it's all incredibly interesting and insightful. And, and you can explore the different tools and you have so many different tools inside of SEM Rush. Um, so if you have never used any sort of SEO product, Certainly, if you've never used SEM Rush, go to our show notes, tripodpodcast.com, and get yourself uh, that free trial um, and uh, check it out. You know, kick it around for, for a little while. Um, you know, explore your website, have it do, you know, some of the, uh, the scanning features in there. Is there a particular tool or two, Fernando, that you really love inside of SEM Rush where, where maybe someone should start? Yes, the, the, the number, um, actually we have a magic tool and we call it like, like this, is the keyword magic tool. Because uh, from there you can enter a keyword, whatever the keyword is in general, let's, let's say uh, shoes, right? And you have a button there uh, that you can press uh, that is called the questions, uh, question button. And you just press it and we will transform you. We will give you all the related. Oh my God, I'm that, doing this. I'm literally doing this as you're saying it. And this is awesome. I, this is awesome. So, so I did type really, it exactly. Right? Yeah, exactly as I'm going to asking me, did this work well for me? Uh, yes, it's super cool. Um, so you put in, I put in shoes and um, I hit the questions. And yeah, so the number one kind of query by volume is how to clean white shoes. So oh, wow. if you are in this business, in this area, right, that that is a very high volume search. So you can dig into this keyword, I'm sure, you know? Oh yeah, this is crazy. You can dig into this and then it gives you kind of variations on that search. So this, I mean, this is, I'm a nerd at heart, I think. No, I know. So I find SEO incredibly fun and interesting, but this is so cool. This is such, yeah, the keyword magic tool, absolutely a great place to start. What else? Are there, are there other places that we can direct our people that, that may be signing up for this? Is there, is there another feature that, that you really love? Yes. The second one I will uh, definitely recommend to everyone who is, uh, who is starting their businesses or who want to escalate their processes is the topic research tool. So once you have your keyword, let's say shoes, you pick up the, the first question, right? How to clean white shoes, right? So you go to the uh, topic research uh, tools, which is in the content uh, tools, content marketing tools, and there you can write uh, how to uh, clean white shoes. So the question that you want to write um, this tool is basically a PR tool uh, created for uh, thinking on journalists. So this tool is going to pick the most trending uh, content ideas out there that are related to your main topic. So you can uh, you can think about the structure of the content uh, wow. because sometimes you have the just the main idea, the title, 
but you need to put some uh, other um, headers there. And this 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 tool is going to give you more ideas on what about what is trending right now, what people are searching for uh, today. This uh, topic research tool, topic research tool is searching all the information uh, in this precise moment, so it's working uh, live. Wow! Yeah, this is this is so cool. I mean, you find out? yeah, yeah, it's it's awesome. Like and like I said, this is such a good tool for for quarantine when you're inside and you know there's stuff that you you can tinker with this all day long and i think you know get some really insightful like action items but 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 it's 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 kind of a it's a treasure trove right i mean i think there's just a lot here that that you guys out there can check out uh, again, the promo code and information on our show notes page, tripodpodcast.com. Um, I'm super stoked. And, and like I said, I think this is the first of hopefully, uh, many other appearances for Fernando when we are talking about SEO. So with that, I would like to give you the opportunity, um, Fernando, how can people connect with you or with, you know, SEM Rush? Do you want to throw any any sort of links, information, anything out there? Um, I, I yield the floor to you to fire away. Thank you. Nice. Definitely. If you want to connect with me, I'm, I'm a very public person. I have my account, social um, social accounts in every social network. Uh, if you want to find me on LinkedIn, Fernando Angulo. Twitter, the same thing, uh, Instagram, uh, Pinterest, uh, I don't know what, oh, I have also a TikTok account, so whatever How you How are you doing with TikTok? Me. Are you, are you, I want, I love TikTok as a platform, um, be, I'm a content creator, I, I can, I fancy myself a content creator, right? But yeah. I just, I, I could sit in TikTok forever and just watch stuff, but it's so, the stuff that people do is so good. Um, not gonna lie, it's 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 intimidating, you know. <laughs> and for this for, for this time, quarantine time, most of the people I know from the industry are That's there. True. Yeah, you, okay. Yeah, yeah. So you're yeah. you're kind of forced to create a TikTok account. But yes, I'm not publishing not, nothing in, in public there right now because I'm just doing for, for my family. But as some of the things that I'm doing lately with my kids, I have two daughters. Are, are, are really nice. I, I believe I'm going nice. to be publishing that. Uh, lean, lean on the kids for the content that makes its way to Snapchat and TikTok. I think that's maybe a part of the lesson for sure. But there's some, listen, there's some awesome stuff making its way there. And just for anyone out there that is looking to connect with Fernando, um, spell your last name uh, for uh, for our listening audience. And of course, all of these links will be on the show notes page, a tripod podcast. But uh, go ahead and fire off the spelling of your last name if you don't mind, Fernando. Yeah, sure. So my first name is uh, Fernando, pretty easy to remember, and my last name is Angulo, A-N-G-U-L-O, Angulo. Awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time um, chatting with me, chatting with our audience. I really appreciate you coming on. Um, like I said, you're such a wealth of information. Um, and SEO is such a moving target, but such an important part of digital marketing that um, I, I, I'm really happy to have brought this to the audience with with you riding along with me. So so thank you so much. Thank you, Ross. I hope this all this information was useful for every, uh, everyone. And uh, let's stay in touch. Absolutely. All right, everyone, get out there, check out semrush.com, get the promo code from our website. And as always, I encourage you to keep pedaling. Thanks for listening to Tripod. Be sure to subscribe and rate the show on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, Stitcher, or wherever you listen. Show notes can be found at tripodpodcast.com. Connect with Tricycle Creative on social media at Hello Tricycle. And learn more about how we can help you with your marketing at tricycle-creative.com.